I joined YouTube on November the 13th, 2020, and uploaded my first ever video shortly afterwards on December the 18th. Don't watch it, it's terrible. <laughs> so about one year and eight months ago. And in that time, I've amassed just short of 5,000 subscribers. I've uploaded 60 odd videos and collected nearly a quarter of a million views. As I approach the two year mark, I want to show you exactly what I've earned from this YouTube channel so far and discuss whether or not I should keep going or maybe give up. That's where I need your help. I hope this video is perhaps a more realistic view to some of those you may have seen from other creators. So with YouTube, you don't start earning money straight away. You have to fulfill two criteria. You need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. It took me nine months and 33 videos to get the 1,000 subscribers, and I even celebrated this landmark moment by giving away some special That Finance Show mugs. I had to wait a little longer to tick over the 4,000 hours of watch time, but I finally became monetized on November the 16th, 2021, almost a year to the day since I created the channel and about 11 months on from my very first upload. And it was at this point that my life changed forever. Wednesday, November 17th. A momentous day. I'm a professional YouTuber now, making money from making videos. Everything feels different. The sheets on the bed, my morning coffee tastes better, and how is it that even my toothpaste is more delicious than ever? This must be what success feels like. After a busy morning on the phone to the dealership discussing whether my new Lamborghini should be green or yellow, I open up my laptop to see the money rolling in. And there it is, staring me in the face. On this one day alone, I had earned £1.10. <laughs> Consider the car cancelled. Right, we're going to look at this properly now. I'm going to go through it month by month and show you exactly what I earned in each month. And I'm also going to show you how many videos I uploaded in each of those months. But first, I need to show you my CPMs and RPMs because what you earn on YouTube is heavily tied to these metrics. CPM is the cost per thousand impressions. And this metric simply represents the amount of money that advertisers are spending to show ads on your YouTube channel. And then there is RPM, which stands for revenue per milli. Mill. Milli, mill, don't know how you say it, but it essentially represents how much money you've earned per 1,000 views on your channel. And RPM includes revenue from several sources, which includes ad revenue, channel memberships, YouTube premium revenue, super chat and super stickers. Now each channel is very different. Different advertisers pay different amounts. And one thing that massively affects this is what niche you're in. And this is where I got really lucky. According to recent studies, investing and personal finance are right up there in terms of niches with the highest CPM rates. Advertisers in this space tend to have bigger budgets and are willing to pay more to run ads on these types of channels than most. Hooray for me. Many people actually target this niche because of this, and that's one of the reasons why you'll see so many people making personal finance content. For me, it was a complete happy coincidence. I had no idea about this when I started. I'm a financial advisor for a living. I just wanted to make videos to try and pass on my knowledge to those people that otherwise don't normally have access to it. I just got really lucky that what I know about happens to just be a really lucrative niche on YouTube. My RPM has fluctuated all over the place. It's currently showing an average of £3.85, but it has been up as high as £10 and gone down to £2.20-ish. Now the problem with looking at my lifetime RPM is that I spent a long time not monetized. So all those views that I collected before I was monetized didn't earn me a penny, and that's dragging the average down. So if you look at more recent periods where I've been monetized for the entire time, you'll get a truer reflection of what I might expect going forward forward, and that's currently showing at about £5.30-ish. So this means that I could reasonably expect about £5.30 for every thousand views that I collect on these current rates. So in theory, if I had a video blow up and got a million views, I'd earn £5,300. Very nice. 
But what have I actually earned? So, after becoming monetized in November, I uploaded a further two videos that month and I earned a total of £38.45. In December, I managed another two videos and for this, my first full month, earned £83.15. Let's put a running total up here so you uh, can see it as I go through. January 2022, I posted three more videos and I earned £81.16. February, another two videos and a little silly short thing, £72.51. March, I managed five uploads and I earned £94.84. April, another two uploads, £96.67. May, two more uploads, £108.86. June, I only managed one upload, but I earned £138.38, pence, my best month to date. And finally, July, two more uploads and another £120.36. A grand total of £834.38 pence over eight and a half months of being monetized. So let's guess that this run rate, I might get to about £1,200 over my first 12 months of being monetized. Unless, of course, I actually have a, a hit video. Who knows, might be this one. Wouldn't that be ironic? In terms of time spent for return, it's honestly awful. The single worst investment of my time I've ever made, if you bluntly look at the numbers. The countless hours I've poured into making these videos, I can't really begin to imagine. I mean, some of them take me up to 30 hours to create. So 62 videos, 30 hours of video, that's over 1800 hours time spent, earning 834 quid, I'm on about 45p an hour. I mean, I haven't even recouped the money I spent on my very first camera, which has since blown up and I'm onto my second one. Not to mention microphones, lights, subscriptions, the list goes on. Oh, and this is all before tax too. And so it is therefore pretty obvious why I am not full time on YouTube yet. And also why I struggle to keep to a consistent uploading schedule and why I still run my main business as a financial advisor advising clients, because my children tend to be better behaved when they've been fed. But for most YouTubers, ad revenue is only a very small part of the puzzle. Lots of them earn loads more money from affiliate marketing and sponsorships. Affiliate marketing is where creators have links in the descriptions below their videos, and they earn money when you click through those links and buy whatever product or service it's for. You'll notice in the descriptions for my videos, there's a link to open an account with Trading212 and one for Coinbase. I have never really promoted them or got heavily involved with this at all. Perhaps naively, maybe it should be much more of a focus of mine, I don't know. I mean, I've had a few clicks through on the Trading212 link over time and I've earned a handful of free shares, nothing to write home about, and no one has ever used the Coinbase link. There's some transparency for you. And then there are sponsorships. You've almost certainly watched a video where halfway through the creator suddenly springs into life to tell you that today's video is sponsored by Pound Stretcher or whatever. To this day, I've never taken a sponsor on the channel. No, not because no one's ever offered. I have had countless offers, usually one each week, but to be honest with you, they almost always end up straight in the trash. I am never going to take a sponsor on this channel for a product or service that I don't genuinely believe in, think it would be of benefit to you as the viewer, and I'm really Really happy promoting. And I know that sounds really cheesy and predictable, and it's the thing that people say to win some popularity contest, but it's true. I'm not ruling out sponsorships, and if the right brands were to reach out to me, I would happily consider it. But for now, I'll stick to my sweet, sweet ad revenue. There's no doubt that YouTube has presented some amazing opportunities for me, and I've met some really cool people along the way. And although it has its frustrations, like any endeavour, overall, I've really enjoyed the ride. And reading comments every week from people saying that my videos have helped them in one way or another, honestly, is impossible to put a price on, and it is my favourite thing about having this channel. And although I didn't start this channel to make money, I would be lying to you if I didn't say it was part of my plan. I always said I would stick it out for 12 months, see how I'm getting on, and then make a decision. And I've gone well beyond that, so it's time to take some stock. So I need your help. What would you do? Now you've seen the numbers, would you carry on or would you call it a day? Let me know in the comments. And after you've left your comment, I can highly recommend watching this video next, which is all about what finance YouTubers don't tell you. I think you might be surprised that what you're watching is almost all manufactured rubbish. And if nothing else, you might just be surprised at how under control my hair once was.